Hi students, we are going to learn how to use the healing tools. So today is February 20th, so if you go into the content, ding, at the top of the page, and you go into the live classes um, and find February 20th, we're in week six, you go in here, you'll notice that I've got a landscape photo in there, and all you have to do is click on it, and you'll notice that it's that picture with the unsightly telephone pole right in the middle blocking this wonderful landscape. You're going to download it. I save everything to my digital folder, digital photo folder, and I've actually got a little healing tool folder right here. And I've already got this one saved. It's my landscape three. And um, you'll just click save. It won't hurt. So once you've done that, then you can go ahead and um, open up your GIMP window and go File, Open. Make sure that you're in your digital folder, photo folder tool. There's my photo. What I call it? Landscape 4? Nope, not 4. 3. There it is. Landscape 3. I get a little preview there and I click Open. All right, so I am going to try to heal this telephone pole out of here. And what the healer is going to do, it's the one with the little Band-Aid that says healing tool, is you're going to take a little sample. So like if I'm working up here in this cloud, I want this area of the pole up here to match the cloud. So I'm going to grab my healing tool. Um, first, I'm going to save, though. Let's save this GIMP file. So file, save as, always save first. And the beauty of it, it wants to save it right in the same folder where I opened that picture. Perfect. So the only thing you need to do is add your first and last name. Not my first and last name. I'm typing mine because it's me doing this work. When you do it, you'll type your first and last name. Oh, and it even says landscape instead of landscape. Okay, so uh, this is going to be Rachel Jero Healing. Put healing in there, healing landscape three. There you go, your first and last name with healing. I need to see that. And um, this is a .xcf file. So we're gonna save that. Perfect. Okay, so let's grab that little healer. I'm just gonna click on that. And the first thing I need to do is take a sample from the area that I want this to kind of look like. So I'm going to hold down I believe the Alt, yep. And when I press Alt, you'll notice that it changed my cursor a little bit. So I'm holding down Alt and I'm saving because my computer freezes up if my memory, my RAM isn't renewed. Oh, it's not Alt, it's Control. Thank you, sorry, there was a little delay. So you, you know, you've got your Shift, you've got your Control, and you've got your Alt. So whenever you have to figure out what you gotta do, just click on those three. And then when it changes, you know you got the right one. So. This is taking the sample location. So I'm just gonna click over here on the sample. Ding. And now I release the control button and I'm gonna hit save. And now when I come over here, there we go, I can just start holding, clicking and dragging and holding and brushing over this. Ha! If nothing happens, you know that something is wrong. And for some reason, the default brush on my GIMP is always no brush. If I come over here to my tool options, if you don't know where these things are, if they're not showing up, remember, your toolbox right here, it's all under Windows, is right there. Dockable Dialogs has everything else. So if those tool options on the bottom left aren't showing up, pull them up. Your layers are over here, okay? So everything's in there. It says I don't have a brush selected. I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna grab a brush that's big and has a fuzzy edge. Why a fuzzy edge? It's just gonna look better. It's gonna be looking more natural. So great, I have a brush now. Hopefully you do too. Let's start again. It still seems to be using, oh look, now that I have a brush, I can see my brush. I was wondering why I couldn't see that. Now I should be able to come over here and just start painting. Oh, it doesn't look perfect at all. So I might have to go and hold down control and pick another spot in the clouds over here. And I'm gonna go over this again. And you know, it's not great. Let me tell you, it's not great. I'm picking another spot in the clouds, holding down control and click. I'm gonna hope that eventually, whoops, control and Z if you mess up something. 
coming over here where there's some blue. Holding it down. Could that be better? Sometimes you can't get it to look perfect, you know? It's a little better. So now that I got down to the bottom of the cloud and it's all right, I'm gonna try to get rid of this pool and I need to take a sampling from the area that's close to it. I'm gonna start up here and hold down control and I'm gonna click right there, okay? And I'm gonna start painting. And I'm gonna tell you what, that heel tool's not working so well for me in this location, isn't it? It's not. Uh, the heel tool might work a little better if I'm working on something smaller that's not as dark and prominent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control-Z because I'm not pleased with how that turned out. And this time I'm going to use the clone tool. So I'm gonna click Save. Now I just want you to see there's two different tools that look like a clone. They look like stamps, right? So you got to hover over it and make sure that you got the actual clone tool because this one over here is called the Perspective Clone Tool and it's different. So click clone. It's the exact same thing. Um, you're going to have to select an area that you want to like clone from. And this is going to be an identical clone though. It's going to look exactly like this area I click. So holding down control, clicking my sample area. And now when I go to paint, better click save because I think my RAM's suffering there. I can see my brush now. Now when I go to paint, notice it is painting the exact sky behind. Look at that. It's even picking up the clouds over there. Wow, that was cool. I could use that clone tool up in the sky and probably get it in a better effect than what I have right now. So I'm going to click save. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to take a sampling over here and I'm just going to kind of brush a little bit of the clouds from that area in. Not so crazy about how that looks. Hitting control Z, control Z again. I didn't really like that. Maybe I'll try it over here see if this one works. It's a little better. So I'm going to take a couple of different samplings from different areas and I'm just going to hodgepodge together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my blend tool and try to like blend it a little bit. Whoops, didn't like that. Okay, so that smudge tool is what I really mean. File, save, grab your little finger smudger and just come over here and, and smudge it a little bit. Hey, look, that looks just like clouds when I smudge that. That's awesome. Remember, folks, you do have some settings on your smudge tool. You've got the opacity, so you can make it a lighter smudge. That's not like your paint and everything all over the canvas is smearing intensely. You can decrease the opacity and get more of a subtle smudge happening if it's like just too intense. Okay, but remember those settings are there. Something's not working the way you want it to. Also, you can change the size of your brush. Okay, all right, so this guy's looking pretty good. I need to take a sampling of the mountains with my clone tool. So click and save, grab in my clone tool, coming over here, gonna sample right where I wanna paint directly from it. It's gotta be the same color and everything. Click in there. And I'm just going to paint down and see what happens. Hey, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, I've got some, I'm going to hit a new spot right here. It's going to start from right there. It's getting the trees. Oh, this is so cool. It's going right down and getting pretty much everything. Look at that. <laughs> Whoops, control Z. When I, when I lifted it back up and went to paint, it, it grabbed my... It started painting from up here again. So hit Control-Z on that and then just hit a new spot. I'm going to clone from right here and go right down. I'm going to clone from right here and go right down. Oh, the clone tool is so super cool. So you can barely, now look at that. Can't even tell that that pole was ever there. If you wanted to, you could use your little smudger here and probably decrease the opacity significantly so that you're not messing with the sharpness of the image and you could do just a little bit of blending in that area so yeah check that out that's just sweet anyway um, if you've got some old photographs around the house you know some really old ones that have patchy little spots on them and stuff 
you can clone those right out. Let me show you an example of when the clone tool, or not when the, you could heal. When, let me show you an example of when a healing tool would come in handy. Like, this, see this little dark area here? Let's pretend that's your grandmother's mole, your great-great-grandmother's photograph, and there's a mole or a black spot on the photograph that you want to get rid of. Let's see if, let's see if the healing tool will work the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna grab the heal tool, ding, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to grab a sample of this spot by holding down control and clicking on it, and I'm going to just come right there. Boom. That perfectly healed it. Awesome. Okay, just click off of that heal tool and those little dots will go away. So do you see that the heal tool does have a purpose? It does. Oh, and now that I'm zoomed in a little bit, I can see that where my pole was. It's it's kind of funny. I'm going to, um, zooming in is always good. I'm going to grab my, my blur tool, my smudge tool, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to try to kind of smudge out a little bit of these areas where I can see that line. And that might not be the best choice to make because now that area is not very sharp like the rest of the image. And I could go in and blur out a couple more things to kind of make it match. <laughs> There's a bunch of areas I could go in here and blur out. Oh, well, anyway, you could be here all day. You could be here all day. I'm going to go ahead and go view, zoom, fit image and window. And voila, the pole is gone and so is grandma's mole. Perfect. So you just do that for me real quick. You get rid of that pole and make it look nice. Make it look good and turn that in by going file, save, right? That saves the XCF file and file export as, change that PNG to a .jpg, okay? You can type it in yourself or the other way to do it is if it's at PNG, you can go down here to select file type and scroll down alphabetically until you come to JPEG. Click on that and you'll notice that it automatically changes the file extension to JPEG for you. And we're going to slide this over because we're going to export. We always want to see our image when we're exporting. Click export and this little image optimization box comes up and you want to show your preview. How big am I? 82 kilobytes. I'm going up to 100%, 217 kilobytes. Keep that file size under 500 kilobytes, which it is. It's only at 217. So bring it up to 100% if you can. If it's over 500, just drop it down in quality until it gets to 500. All right, perfect. But for this photo, we don't have to do that. Click export. Perfect. Okay, go back to uh, the February 6th live class. Excuse me, that's week six, February 20th in the live classes folder. All right, and there is a Dropbox here. You're gonna click on your Dropbox and there will be an upload button. Click on your upload button and go into that healing tool folder. And I want you to turn in your GIMP file and your healed landscape. So you're turning in both of those named with your first and last name and healing. You can keep the landscape three if you want to. All right, get those turned in and then follow the rest of the directions in class. Thank you.